How's it going guys? Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. In this video, I want to talk about the Nodes 2 plugin by Yanobox. Now there's a couple of reasons why I want to talk about this plugin. One, because I think that it's very underexposed. A lot of you guys have not heard of this plugin before, most likely. And those of you who have, have not really seen it in action. And secondly, because I think that it's a very interesting plugin. It goes really well with my workflow, the kind of work that I do. And I wanted to share with you guys, you know, this plugin, this experience with you guys. Now, if you guys want a full in-depth review, check out the link down below for my full write-up on my opinions and, you know, my thoughts on the Nodes 2 plugin. You know, it's very in-depth, very thorough, and it has all my comparisons there. But in this video, we're going to be talking about Nodes 2, you know, in a general aspect, you know, what it is, how it works, you know, my general opinions on it. So this is what this video is going to be about. So let's go ahead and get started here. So first of all, what exactly is Nodes 2? Nodes 2 is a plugin that allows you to create really interesting, you know, connected base animations, motion graphic elements, UI elements. You really need to think of it as kind of like an Iron Man helmet where you can create interesting heads up display elements, you know, uh, infographic information, data visualization, uh, you know, organic uh, materials such as form uh, and stuff like that. So pretty much this is an example I made that kind of shows you kind of what it does. Um, this is more of an abstract ap approach to what I've seen people use Nodes 2 for. So this is kind of more abstract, uh, but you can create some very nice, you know, connected base stuff like this. And you'll see more what I mean uh, as we go through this video. But essentially, it's a plugin that allows you to create connected base stuff. So if you need to show some kind of connection, maybe a world map or maybe some infographics and stuff like that or data, this is a really good way to do this. And it makes animation very, very easy. So let's go ahead and hop right into After Effects. You can create a new composition so that we can see how this plugin works. So I'm gonna call this nodes two, and we'll create a new solid, and we'll apply effect, Yana box, and nodes two. So what I think about nodes two, is kind of like a cross hybrid between track code form and Plexus. Now it's very similar to track code form in a way that you can actually create some very interesting organic looking shapes and movements uh, in nodes two, but it's also very similar to Plexus in a way that you can actually connect your nodes and show connections that way. So that's very interesting. And the animation is very, very easy, similar to Element 3D's animation engine, as you'll see in a second. So this is Nodes 2, very uh, basic interface here. As you can see, we have tons of presets that you can choose from, and this will really give you an idea on what you can do. So for example, I'm gonna choose the Blast Hemisphere preset. And as you can see, it explodes with a whole bunch of text with some nice trails and some connected uh, nodes and stuff like that. So you know, this is a very cool way to kind of visualize uh, what this can do. Um, there's also a few more presets here. For example, we have this more uh, data-like preset, which kind of has these nice texts connected to each other. You can animate uh, the master completion on and off. And you know, it's a really nice way to just display data. Another preset here is kind of like form where you can actually create some very organic stuff here. So for example, this jellyfish looking creature. If you do a quick ramp preview, you can see that it's gonna you know, organically move. And you can do this very, very easily compared to form and plexus because nodes two is very math oriented. So everything's based on cosines, sines, you have tangents, you have oscillators, periods, and all that stuff. So you're gonna see a lot of math terminology within nodes two. And I think that's very, very cool because you know, behind the scenes, everything is math. And you have a way to create some very organic looking movements here. So as you can see, really nice organic movements. So you can create some pretty interesting heads up displays. Uh, you know, data visualizations, or even organic stuff like this. And this is the power of nodes too. So let's go and take a look at the plugin here. So that was a preset. I'm gonna close it up. Right now we have three options. We can either render nodes, lines, or text. We'll start off with nodes. So nodes are essentially these little dots right here. And um, it's pretty straightforward. In the nodes tab, we're gonna have uh, parameters that control the nodes. So we can control the size. We can create, uh, you know, from three to five, so a little bit bigger. We have, I guess, the size mode, which allows you to control the randomness of the size. So we can do random, and we'll get random sizes, or we can do, you know, based on the sinus curve right here. So as you see, more uh, procedural, I guess more, it's, it's not completely random. Um, we have increase, so it's gonna increase over time. And we have decrease, which will decrease over time. Um, we have, you know, the roundness, the thickness of things, if you're using a texture, um, you can also use, again, textures or sprites as your custom notes. So you don't have to use dots. You can actually use like, you know, images, videos, textures, whatever you want. Um, you can change the orientation, opacity, randomness, opacity. So we have stuff like this. Um, you know, of course the color. You can change the color mode to maybe like triad. So we can select the color right here. 
and it's going to pick appropriate colors uh, for based on those rules here. So we can do triad, complementary, random hue, random shades. So this is just a nice way to kind of conform to certain uh, color standards, color rules, uh, very easily automatically using nodes. And of course we have blending modes and the uh, nodes completion, which will kind of draw on the nodes. So, you know, fairly basic parameters that you would kind of expect to have in a plugin like this. So I want to mention here that um, this plugin is fully 3D aware in After Effects. So we can create a camera and we can actually go in here and, you know, zoom in, orbit, do our fancy camera animations. It's a 3D, uh, I guess, particle system. Uh, and that's very important to note here. So that's the nodes. I'm going to hop into the form here and show you kind of the basic idea of how to create, or I guess, shapes within nodes too. So right now we're using a sphere. We can change it to circle and that would create a nice circle right here. Uh, we can change the node count or the particle count. We can use a sine curve. We can do a lot of things. We can even import from OBJ, which I'll show you in a few minutes here. But uh, again, this is where you change all the parameters of your shape, kind of like the geometry section of mirror. Uh, we can control the orientation of the particles. If you're using a texture, you may want to look at the camera all the time. We have amplitude. You know, stuff like this. We have things based you know, on the sphere. We can have the radius. We can have the inner offset. And then we have some rolling up that would kind of just roll up and twist our sphere. So that's essentially the basics of the form. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the lines. So I'm going to check render lines. And what that would do is actually connect the nodes with lines. And we can go to the lines tab and take a look at some of these settings here. Again, these settings are very similar to Plexus. We have, of course, the thickness of the line, change it to the five, change it to one. So we can change the thickness around uh, the lines here. We have the primitive type. So we have a line. We have a curved line, which will enable uh, some more extra features here. For an example, we can display the tangent. And then we can offset the tangent in, let's say, Z. And you're going to see that our lines are no longer straight lines. They're actually curved lines because we set it to a curved line mode. And of course, we can change the tangent color. We can change everything here, the tangent offset. We can even change, uh, you know, the line colors. So something else, maybe like, uh, you know, red or something like that. So as you can see, very basic parameters here that you would expect. Um, but it really gives you fine control on how to create some very interesting curved lines. So of course we have all this stuff here. We have distance influence, we have these samples. So you can have smooth the lines if you wanted to. Um, everything like that, end color and start color. So we can start with the nice uh, dark blue. We can end in a light blue. And as you can see, we have something like this. We can enable the tangent to maybe like a, maybe like a red. You kind of see the red in there. And essentially, this is what nodes two is. Uh, for the lines. So these are just some of the, uh, the line properties here. It gets really interesting when you start to add uh, oscillators, which kind of displaces this whole thing. So I'm gonna go into the curves oscillator and I'm gonna go to maybe a wave. And this will displace the curves, just the curves based on a wave. So we have uh, the amplitude of the wave. So you can mess this up like this. You can even change the frequency or the period of the wave. So as you can see, you know, all your math terms and science terms coming back to you right here, the evolution. So of course you have all these parameters. You can displace it in X, Y, Z, and all the combinations above. So let's change it to X, Y, Z. So you can do a lot of stuff here and you have a lot of control. So this is just messing with the curves itself. If you wanted to displace the whole shape, we have a tab for that called the oscillator tab. And of course we can add a wave and we can just displace it the way we normally would change the mode. You can do a random oscillator, which will just, you know, randomly displace all your points. Or you can use a noise oscillator, which is based on a fractal, uh, and it'll just displace it based on that. So you have control over everything like this. So next we'll go into the connections tab. And this is where you define what is connected. So maybe you're doing a map animation, you want to connect London to Paris to New York or whatever. This is kind of how you kind of define what is a connection and what is not. And there's a few options that you can choose from here. We have serial, which is, you know, in sequence, we have something called uh, free position, which we can actually control the connection point. Uh, so right here, we can move over here, we can move over here and everything's kind of connected in this direction here. 
we have distance. So we can play around with the min distance and max distance. And this will control, uh, you know, what is connected and what is not based on distance. So if they're close to each other, you know, they'll be connected. If they're not, there won't be. So you have the distance uh, connection type. You also have something called triangulation, which I'll show you in a bit. And we also have, uh, of course, random. So all the points will be randomly connected to each other, uh, you know, based on the random seed here. And this can be very interesting as well. So of course, these are a few ways you can actually connect uh, things together. I'm gonna change it back to maybe serial here. And then we'll go into the effects tab next. And the effects tabs are very interesting here. And these are kind of just quick ways to animate stuff. So we can change it to maybe like morphing. And we can actually morph the shape to something else here. So for an example, we can change the end form to a circle. And that way, if we animate the time, it will actually animate this shape into a circle. So hit a keyframe, we move two seconds, and we'll set the time to one. And as you can see, it automatically animates to a circle. And this can be very, very helpful if you're trying to do some, you know, UI graphics or something like that, or maybe it's some fancy projection uh, motion graphic elements here. You can play around with the radius, the inner offset, you know, the rolling and stuff like that, and just change it to whatever you want. You do a sine curve, so morph into a curve, you know. There's a lot of things you can do, and I think it's very, very interesting. Even a spiral is pretty interesting here. So very easy to do morphing. And of course, you have these other uh, effects that I won't really go into in this video, but um, they're kind of similar. Let's go ahead and hop into the animation tab. And the animation tab is similar to Element 3D's animation engine in a way that you just pretty much set whatever you want. So for an example, let's say rotation in Y. Set the speed to maybe like four and just hit RAM preview. And you're gonna see that without a single keyframe, everything is animated by itself. And this is insanely useful if you're creating, you know, heads up display graphics, stuff like that, because a lot of times you just want some random movement. You want things to be rotating around, you know, evolving over time. And you really do not want to be animating this by hand or setting keyframes. And this is just a really nice way of just setting automatic animation without any keyframes. And as you can see, it just rotates on its own without any keyframes based on this speed. We can also set a second parameter here. So for an example, maybe we can do oscillator amplitude. And you're gonna need some amplitude to begin with here. So just crank it up. And uh, over time, you're gonna see that it just kind of explodes. So it's gonna animate the amplitude over time. And this is very, very cool. And I think this is a really great way uh, to animate stuff if you're creating elements or UI elements or stuff like that. And you know, it really shows that Notes 2 really knows what it's doing and you know, what it's catering for. And of course we have the rendering tab, which will allow you to kind of simulate depth effects. So for example, opacity will kind of just fade things out over time based on distance. We have stuff like uh, fog, which is uh, very similar to fog in Trap Gun Mirror. You know, you set a start distance, you set an end distance, and it'll just kind of add a nice fog to everything based on, you know, your distance. So something like this, you can create a nice fog. Um, so, you know, you have all that stuff, uh, luminosity here, you can make things brighter over time. So yeah, stuff like that. You have uh, control over the notes texture, the motion blur, the anti-aliasing, you know, you have manual control over these things. I think it's very, very handy. Um, something that can be very useful to tweak as well. Lastly, I want to show you guys the render text option here. So render text does exactly what it means. It renders text at the nodes point. So we can go into the text tab and control everything here. We can increase the font size. We can even zoom in here so you can guys can see. And at every single point, there is a text. We can change the fonts to whatever we want. There are some predefined, I guess, pre-built-in accelerated fonts, which will render a little bit faster than using any other fonts. But these accelerated fonts render pretty fast um, and they're pretty common here. So we can change the font size, the kerning. We can change you know, the case, um, text source. We can offset the position of the text based on the nodes. We can change the color to whatever we want. We can change the opacity randomness, pretty much every setting that you would imagine, um, you know, blending modes and stuff like that. So you can also change the text here. We can go to custom text and then we can either import a text file, which has our text in that text file, or we can just hit edit and, you know, just erase all this stuff and type creative dojo. It's awesome, hit okay. 
and it will actually render the new text automatically. So this is a pretty powerful way to import stuff and edit text and you know just display a lot of text in a nice particle system. I know that there's a lot of scripts that does this, uh, but by doing it in Nodes 2, you have finer control all in a neat little plugin without having to mess with text layers and stuff like that. So this is a pretty nice way to just kind of visualize a whole bunch of text in 3D space. And you can render lines, connect them, you know, make them countries, make them, you know, whatever you want, marketing terms, whatever you want. So this is a pretty nice way to display a bunch of text in a very systematic way. Now, before I show you guys the OBJ features, I want to go ahead and give a quick shout out to the folks over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform that allows you to create really awesome websites. They have a very easy page builder. We can actually design your site live, see all your changes, edit and add stuff right there in your page builder. They have a ton of templates and designs to work with. So you can pretty much choose and customize your whole site design very easily using the site builder. It's very simple so that you can focus on your work and your content instead of worrying about all the technical stuff like coding or design for your website. And it makes it really easy just to get your content out there. Whether you're creating an online store or portfolio, it makes it very, very easy. Squarespace has awesome 24 hour support. And most importantly, it's very, very affordable. So right at just $8 a month, you can get your website up and running right now. You can go to squarespace.com slash dojo to get your free trial. And by using promo code dojo at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order. So check them out, squarespace.com slash dojo. The best place to create a beautiful website to allow you to focus on your content instead of worrying about the technical stuff of running a website. So check it out, squarespace.com slash dojo. So last thing here, I want to show you guys the OBJ features of Nodes 2. It's very similar to uh, TrapCut Forms OBJ features here. We can go to the form, go to import OBJ 3D models, and we can actually import a model here. So here I have my model. I'm just going to hit OK. And here we have our model. I'm going to go ahead and run to the lines. And of course, you can actually import an OBJ sequence so that you can actually have an animated OBJ working right, right here. We can normalize the size of it. We can change the size of it this way. We can change the angle. And of course, we have all the basic controls um, that come with nodes. So for example, we can go to the oscillator and go to wave. We can displace it. We can change the amplitude. We can do a lot of things to it. Um, you can change the color and everything like that. So of course, the OBJ features is very, very similar to form. You can do all the stuff that you can uh, normally with nodes to, to an OBJ object. It's going to create nodes at every vertex point in your OBJ model. So very interesting, very powerful. And you can create some pretty awesome motion graphics using this thing here. And of course, you can get your camera and just orbit around it. And as you can see, we have our 3D model connected and rendered in nodes too. And that is very, very cool. Now let's go and talk about the cons of this plugin. First of all, this plugin is Mac only. So that is very limiting to PC users. Although this is nothing new for FX factory plugins. It's usually Mac only anyways. Uh, but I think this is a very, very huge drawback in limiting their customer base because, you know, really, um, a lot of people are using Windows nowadays. And if you're not supporting Windows, uh, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, but, you know, this is the huge downside to this. So I'm sorry, Windows users, you can't try this out unless you own a Mac. And lastly, there's no depth of field support. So you can't get up and close and enable depth of field and get these nice fancy blurs. You're going to need to fake the blur somehow, uh, you know, using effects and trickery and stuff like that. So there's no depth of field and it's Mac only. So those are the two biggest drawbacks in this plugin. But for the most part, it's very, very powerful. You pretty much have all the controls in form and plexus combined, plus additional features that really make this plugin very, very powerful and really good at what it's made to do, which is rendering elements, connected base motion graphic elements, heads up display, infographic data, and stuff like that. So it's a very, very good plugin for this stuff. If you constantly use form or plexus in your workflow, then you definitely need to check out notes too and possibly add it to your workflow. Definitely check it out. It's a very powerful plugin. And I think it has a good place in your arsenal if you use those two plugins pretty frequently. So that's pretty much it, guys. This is the Nodes 2 plugin by Anabox. I know it's not a very in-depth review. But if you want an in-depth review, once again, go into the article link down below where you can see all my in-depth opinions, thoughts, and comparisons. This is just a general video of showing you guys what Nodes 2 is. Hopefully, you guys found this video very useful. Um, so that's pretty much it for this plugin, guys. My name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.